Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Up on the Soapbox podcast. This is episode 20. Now, that has a ring to it. It's uh, not just double digits. It's double the double digits, something like that. I don't know. Um, either way, we're growing up fast, and uh, we're happy that you all are along for the ride. I am Brett Schaefer. I'm your co-host today, and with me today is my other co-host, Dan Piggott. What's going on, Dan? Not too much. I, I uh, Even I will acknowledge 20 is a good number, right? I mean, you, you like to talk about we did seven, you're happy and pleased, and 11, and these weird numbers. 20 is, 20 is good. I think that's a significant milestone that we've kind of come over. Here we go. So 20 is certainly 20. in a relationship. 20 is a commitment. And, uh, you know, being 20 years old is like one year of shy of being where you really want to be when you're 20, right? I mean, let's face it, 21. So maybe next episode, we could have a real party. Hey, what it, really, it also means we've been at this for 40 weeks, which is even more interesting. But uh, I thought okay. you said I didn't have to know any math today. Now I'm really confused. <laughs> All right, with us today, enough about us. With us today, we have a really special guest and a Soapbox founding supplier. Uh, today joining us, we have Jesse Gray. He is the marketing director over at Pop Promotions. Welcome, did we say pop promotions or promos or pop YouTube? promos? Yeah. Promos, pop promos. promos. Jesse, welcome to the show today. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, the the stage is yours, my friend. All right. Uh, first of all, thanks for having me. Um, happy to be here. Um, I am the marketing director over here at Pop Promos. Uh, coming up on uh, three and a half years here, I think now. Um, fantastic young growing company uh, based out of Philadelphia, um, sitting here in our, our beautiful new uh, building. Uh, we moved uh, about a year ago uh, into uh, the historic Harbison Milk Dairy that, uh, that Sterling Wilson, one of our founders, uh, was a principal in helping uh, redevelop. Um, so yeah, I'm uh, originally a roughly outside of Philadelphia guy. Um, I've uh, been working in custom manufacturing for a number of different years um, uh, at a couple different places. Um, this was my first foray into the promotional products uh, industry. Uh, I did uh, work for uh, a number of years uh, for a company that did CD and DVD manufacturing, custom manufacturing. Uh, then they also moved into uh, custom uh, book manufacturing and publishing. So that was interesting, working with a lot of uh, a, a lot of uh, content creators. Uh, and then I worked for uh, for a hot minute at, a, at an apparel decorator before I ended up here at Pop. So. Uh, Love it. Uh, love the manufacturing aspect of it and understanding, uh, you know, as a supplier, like how things get made. And uh, it's one of the things that Pop really does well uh, is the, the, the custom part of, uh, of custom made simple here. Um, so a uh, couple interesting personal facts. I'm a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu black belt. I've uh, been doing that for about 16 years and uh, I'm a really avid motorcyclist. I've motorcycled in 46 of the United States and I've couple provinces in Canada as well. Wow. That's pretty interesting. Talk. So talk to me, Brett, you got to be nice to him now. You know, I know you were going to start, <laughs> you were going to pick a fight with him. I recommend you don't. Okay? So, <laughs> uh, so talk to me about uh, pop. And I feel like they have sort of a disruptive presence. I think their whole approach to this thing uh, was um, not very well understood when they first came into the market yeah. because har hardly really nobody was doing what they're doing. So kind of maybe you can explain a little bit about what makes um, their offering so unique to the to the promo space. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. So we, we call ourselves a rapid importer uh, of, of Panto matched and, and full color products uh, custom made delivered in uh, 10 to 30 days or less guaranteed. Right. That's our elevator pitch. Um, what makes us so different is unlike most suppliers in the industry, uh, we don't hold any inventory. Uh, we are not a uh, quick uh, throw a single color on something and get it out the door in, in two days. Uh, the products that we make are uh, really nice. And because we make them from scratch, uh, we're able to do a level of customization that really nobody else does. Um, you know, Pantone matching was originally how uh, we got our start. Uh, one of the founders, Sterling Wilson, um, when he was still in college, uh, had a connection over in China uh, initially, and then he made Pantone match sunglasses, ordered a bunch of them, sold them at a USC uh, football game out of a backpack, blew through them and said, hey, I might have an idea here uh, for a business. Uh, he got together with, uh, with our CEO, Aaron Riley, who uh, they were friends from high school, and uh, they really built it up from the ground. Um, 
rapid importer, uh, we don't uh, we don't ship over by sea, right? We fly everything in. So right now, uh, especially, um, we have been in thriving uh, with all the given uh, problems that have been going on in the industry about people having inventory and whatnot. Um, we we have such a unique business model. It's actually been uh, you know, really a benefit for us uh, over the last year or so uh, and helped to, to propel the company farther. That, that is remarkable to hear because you're thinking if you're 100 percent import based, you know, the the logic would be, yeah. you know, you're in you're you're feeling the pain like a lot of people are in the industry about the, the supply chain. And you're telling me that's the exact opposite for you. Uh, that's that's really fascinating. So so our, the original idea was was sunglasses. How yep. has it expanded out? How many, you know, can you, uh, uh, is anything up for grabs or you guys stay in your lanes as far as product is, is concerned? And, uh, you know, so how many different product offerings do you, do you have? Yeah, I think right now, I think right now our product catalog is, is uh, a little bit over 80 products. Um, we have expanded into a number of different things. Uh, hot for us right now, obviously winter wearables, uh, beanies, scarves, gloves, um, those kind of things. Uh, generally, we do um, a lot of different wearable accessories. Uh, we do bags. Uh, we have some uh, really awesome pop packs that are collapsible bags that go into a little uh, a little bag. Uh, recycled canvas bags, um, totes, um, lanyards. Uh, we do do some of the stuff that I would be that would be considered more, um, uh, you know, the the smaller hit stuff, uh, sticky wallets and lanyards and stuff. But we also do a lot of nicer high end products. Uh, all of them, uh, again, custom made from scratch. So uh, we're really able to infuse uh, kind of the brand's DNA for the companies that we make these for. Um, you know, people are very specific about their brand colors. Uh, McDonald's uh, or Home Depot or Coke or whoever it may be, uh, they don't want just any red or orange or yellow, uh, you know, they have very specific uh, requirements. Uh, and then when you see the level of sophistication and customization that goes into making the products along with the colors being right on point, you know, it really does make for, for something more premium. And our turn times, right, we, we've developed uh, relationships with our manufacturers, uh, uh, the manufacturing facilities that uh, they know exactly how to make our products into the exact specifications that we need them for. That's why we're able to get them done so quickly. Uh, you know, like I said, within 10 to 30 days uh, or less uh, ship it, guarantee. It, so, so is every single product custom PMS matched? It doesn't have to be custom PMS match. They can be full color too. We have a lot of full color products like uh, uh, okay. just released fleece blankets uh, uh, this past week. Wow. Um, so we have a lot of other products that are not uh, specifically PMS matched. Uh, they may be full color and have a PMS element like a piping or some a handle or something that goes along with it as well. But we do have yeah. a mixture of those. So what's the, what's the hottest thing right now you've got in the line? What, what, are, what are people clamoring for at this point? Well, right now there's a couple of things. I mean, obviously dress socks, so the, they're one of our bread and butter products as well. And we do a number of different socks. So we have a full sock line. Uh, dress socks are always popular around the holidays, right? For gifting and our corporate gifting and whatnot. Uh, but our winter wearables right now have been super, super hot. Uh, our beanies in particular uh, are just like going like gangbusters. We have a couple of different versions of beanies, uh, a toboggan beanie that's long with the tassels. We have a regular beanie, uh, you know, with the cuff and the pom-pom. We have uh, slouch beanies, which are a little bit more relaxed. And then we just released cable knit beanies as well. So um, that product line is, is, is doing great for us right now. Excellent. Do you have uh, designers on staff to help out with the design process? Because I know designing custom product becomes a big roadblock for a lot of folks. Yeah, that's also one of the one of our strengths. Uh, we have, I think, uh, we're over 20 uh, designers right now on staff. Uh, we turn virtuals around usually within 24 hours is, is what we shoot for uh, to have virtuals back to clients. And you're right, because it is custom product. Um, you know, we've gotten very good over the years at, at both designing because we know our limitations for uh, what can be manufactured, but also we know what's on trend. We really follow uh, what's going on both in retail and then also what's going on in the promo industry you know uh they they oftentimes have different unique trends that are just unique to promo uh that that we keep track of and we're able to capitalize on them uh you know with the the size of the art staff that we have wow great stuff well as uh we mentioned as we were talking before we got on here but for the rest of our audience um 
our distributors on the soapbox are extraordinarily impressed with your offerings and uh, what you guys are doing. So uh, keep up the great work, keep expanding that product line. And I know, uh, you know, putting my operations hat back on, which I did for a long time on the supplier side, I can't even imagine what it's like to ship over fleece blankets uh, via air, but uh, that's not my problem, as they say. So I'm sure whatever you're doing, you're doing it well. <laughs> All right, so let's let's move on to our uh, soapbox moment. And I believe this week I have the honor, and it is an honor, to go first. Now, as I was thinking about this, I realized we might want to retitle this portion of our podcast to uh, hashtag, as the kids say, hashtag first world problems or Hashtag grumpy old men or grumpy old people, whatever the case may be. And and hashtag uh, get off my lawn. Too. Yeah, so so today is no exception to that. <laughs> but I do want to talk about a real first world issue that I have. And, uh, oh. you know, I kind of know that I'm going into uh, we're, we're going to continue this discussion based on sports. So I figured now was as good, good a time as any to get this off my chest. Mm-hmm. Now, I stream most of my live sports. I don't know. You guys stream at all? Do you do that, Jesse? Oh. You stream your sports? The other, the bigger problem I have in streaming is not a problem. It's, it's easy. It's convenient. I mean, I could be sitting at my kids marching band competition, watching my college football team play. Not that I did that last weekend, um, but I could, if I wanted to, I could do that kind of stuff. So my biggest problem with streaming is it's about two minutes behind the real action. So if I don't turn off my sports alerts, like my ESPN app or whatnot, I'm getting the alert before the action even happens. Hmm. This is what we call a first world problem. It's personified in this. So what do you do? I usually put my phone under a pillow if I'm sitting there watching it on uh, on TV at home. I am too lazy to turn off the app and turn it back on. So I have to keep that on. So I'll put my phone across the room. I'll do whatever I can. It's a it's a frustrating problem. So either we need to slow down the sports scrolls on your phones to match match up with the streaming services. Mm. What am I supposed to do here? What's a guy to do in this day and age of convenience? I don't know. So anyway, that's my soapbox moment. It needs to get figured out by smarter people than me. Wow. <laughs> uh, you know, as in, in the scope of problems, this really is not a big problem. I, have I think say. it's up there. I really it's do. Annoying. It's annoying. I, I, I hear I don't stream sports. So I have no issues with this. You don't watch, you don't watch movies either. So that's a whole other story. Well, I, I watch movies now. I, I, I do, st- I stream things, but I don't stream sports. I mean, I don't even know where you would do it. on your phone. You're sitting there watching it on your phone. Oh, sure. I, Absolutely. I, I knew right where you were going when you, when you let off with this, yeah. uh, because I'm on a text chain with my dad and my brother and every Sunday or whenever there's oh, a yeah. game, they're texting me about two minutes before something big <laughs> happens. So, you know, I, I kind of wait till the phone. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I feel for you. Uh, not that much, but I do feel for you. And uh, you just kind of have to deal with it. But Listen, I've had to come up with 20 of these, Dan. Not, they're keep, not all going to uh, agree with you. So <laughs> Keep the phone under your pillow. I think you'll be fine. Okay. All right. Here we go. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go now. And uh, so I had, I had a choice of two soapbox moments. And I'm going to select the second one which is to say I made a bold move a week ago and bought a new piece of equipment. And that is called a standing desk. And as you can see, I am standing right now. Do a jumping Jack. I don't believe you. This is the, this is the cool, (laughs) this is the coolest thing in the world. I mean, I don't know why I didn't do this. You know, I don't even know five years ago. I I didn't quite understand it five years ago. I'm like, who'd want to work all day with, you know, standing up. Meanwhile, now I walk into my office I just kind of roll up to my desk. I feel more productive. I, I don't know whether I am. Brett, Brett can confirm whether I am or I'm not. Don't answer. I'm just a theoretical, it's a rhetorical question. I don't want mm-hmm. to. But the point is, I, I just feel like I get more done. I'm more, and, and, and it, you know, you're just, you're just on your toes, literally. I just thought of that. But uh, yeah, so I'm kind of highly, I mean, I haven't, look, I'm five or six days of work into this thing. So I guess I'm no expert on, on the issue, but I could tell you the early returns here are, this is the coolest thing in the world. Have you guys ever used one? Yeah. I have one for about five or six years now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You're in. So, yeah. I mean, what did you notice as the biggest difference when you first started using it? Anything in particular jump out at you? Yeah. I mean, you know, th- Sometimes like after lunch, if you're sitting at your desk, you know, you get after lunch, you get a little drowsy, maybe get your coffee, you know, you're just kind of a little more sluggish. You don't have that when you have a standing desk, you're just up and ready to go all the time. It seems that way. Now, do you, do you alternate and you sit down once in a blue moon or what do you Yeah. Doing? Yeah. I have the, like the tall, the tall chair, uh, okay. on, you know, like just occasionally. 
Yeah. I'm going to make a bold statement here and say that I, I was, uh, I had an OG standing desk. I was, uh, my first job was a cashier at Kmart. So I, <laughs> I was standing and yeah. working. So. Well, there you go. Okay. Yeah. So you know, you know the benefits firsthand. I do, I anyway, do. I don't know. I'm digging it. I'm recommending everybody check it out for themselves. But uh, I, and, and I just desk. and I just realized Kmart is a dated reference these days. It doesn't even exist yeah, anymore. Really. Anyway, anyway, Jesse, what's on your mind today? Let's hear it. Well, a little segue from the sports you were talking a minute ago. Um, being from Philadelphia, we're obviously a very big sports city, uh, and there is a narrative. Oh man. Oh my. <laughs> there's, there's a, there's a narrative out there that Philadelphia sports fans are, are the worst. And uh, you know, I have to say that I, I think this is an unfair characteristic. There's plenty of other cities where there are just really, really, uh, you know, poor sports fan moments that happen. And uh, for some reason, uh, Philadelphia has had this moniker. I, I think it's a lot of lazy journalism about a story that started in, in 1968 with uh, with some fans throwing snowballs at Santa. Uh, yeah. But you know, there's more to that story, even uh, you know. But uh, having been a, a Philly sports fan my entire life, I'm going on uh, 30 some years with my family with uh, Eagle season tickets, and we had Sixers tickets, and and Phillies, and yeah, I mean, you name it, Flyers, been to, been to every type of event you can see in the handful of, uh, you know, bad things I've seen is very, you know, very small in uh, comparison, so. I, thinking, I agree, I really agree with you 100%. Every, there's bad apples in every bunch, there's no question sure. about it, and for some reason they had that, you, you hit it on the head, it's the throwing snowballs at that, that, that skinny, awful substitute yeah. Santa Claus that came in exactly. at, at Franklin Field way back in the black and white days, you know, and it stuck, you know, that story just stuck and it has, it has legs now for 50 years. And um, so that's ES, it. I, I kind of even did a mock 30 for 30 on it. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. A mock 30 for 30. Yeah. yeah they did like a joke 30 for 30 on, oh. on Santa and snowballs and the whole thing with Philly. Yeah. I, have, uh, I have one one personal story I can add. I've been to many Philly sporting events, uh, rooting for the opposition, which is a, a scary proposition, no matter where you go, uh, yeah. if you're rooting for the opposition. And I can tell you, and I've been to many Jets games, even though I'm a Giants fan, first and foremost, I do like the Jets. The Jets fan base is pretty darn intense. And, yeah. uh, you know, it, it, it's, it can be really ruthless and brutal on uh, opposition fan, uh, on opposing fans. But I did go down to a uh, Rangers Flyers uh, playoff game not too long ago, probably 10 years ago. I've been down in, in the Carolinas for seven years, and it was just before that. And uh, I was meeting a friend who had tickets, and I got there um, before he arrived. So I spent some time. This was after they built the new Comcast Arena with that entertainment complex that's yep. right next to it with the restaurants and the bars. So I'm... So he said, why don't we meet over at whatever bar was over in, I, I don't even know what they call that complex, but I found a bar in the center. I had this hat in my back pocket. I just, I didn't want to wear it. I wasn't wearing any jerseys or anything because I was by myself and I was certainly a little bit concerned about uh, getting any kind of unwanted attention. I found two guys that were three times your width, Jesse, that were there wearing like LA Raiders stuff. And I planted myself right between them had a drink or two while I waited for my friend to show up. At one point I did look back and I see one guy yelling. It was so loud in there. He was pointing at me and yelling and, and, and that was it. But I moved on and I did my thing and uh, I'll probably never do that again, but nonetheless, it was, I think you can expect that kind of behavior anywhere. Yeah, so I've been uh, the Giants games. I've been at the games in New York at, at the garden and yeah, it's not, it's not fun being an opposing fan somewhere else. Not hospitable. That is so true. Yeah. Oh, that's a good one. The old days. All right. So let's move on to uh, our yes, no question. And we'll wrap this thing up here. So, you know, Philly is known for a couple of uh, highly touted food products, you know, pretzels and obviously Philly cheesesteaks. But here's our yes, no question to you. The true quintessential Philly sandwich is actually roast pork with provolone, not the cheesesteak. Yes or no? Ooh, man, that's tough. I'm going to say yes. Wow. I didn't, you know, I knew it was a hard question and I didn't think you were going to go there. Tell, talk to us. why. Yeah, let's hear it. Let's hear there, it. There, there are, I mean, the, the cheesesteak is obviously, it's just, it's one of those things that uh, it's so ubiquitous to, to, with Philadelphia and everybody knows it. And every time they come here for a sporting event, they show them down at Pats and Geno's and the whole thing. But uh, really there are a lot of 
really, really good places that you can get a roast pork sandwich around the city. Um, and if you are, you know, real Philadelphians will know and they'll know the places to go. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, I'm probably going to get a little flack from some people for that one, but, uh, you know, every you, you, cheese steaks are obviously Philadelphia, but you know, the roast pork is really a, uh, definitely a, well who's 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 really going to give a black belt in jujitsu uh jujitsu a uh too much flack so don't worry about it you'll be, uh, you'll be what uh what would be your your favorite philly cheesesteak who makes the best your uh, opinion for cheesesteaks for cheesesteaks i would go jim's uh like if you want to go like the name brand but really i always tell people for a cheesesteak like the the place around your corner is always the place that makes the best one whatever the yeah. local place is they're usually your your best ones. And as much as people like whiz on their, the cheese whiz on their cheese steaks when they're from out of town, most of them are just American cheese. That's, that's the best. Most yeah, Jim's, is the, Jim's is on South Street. Is that the one on yeah, South Jim's, Street? Yep. With yeah. the uh, metallic uh, front to it? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Right on. I think it's third, third and South. Yeah. Very good. All right. So there you go. You heard it from the, the horse's mouth here. I mean, we have uh, the local guy has, uh, is in the know. And it is so. So there we go. Jesse, thanks for being with us today. We appreciate your participation on our little podcast here. But more importantly, we love having you and the Pop Promos team on the Soapbox. Thank you for being a founding supplier. And you can meet with Jesse's team on the Soapbox. Thanks for being here today. Thanks, guys. Appreciate your time.